I've often gotten the question on how to grade those cinematic green tones in video. So today we're going to have a look at that. When I started out myself, green tones were one of the things that I found the most difficult to work with and figure out how to grade. Today I'm going to show you a technique on how to get those cinematic green tones. So we're going to be using three tools today. We're going to use the primaries in DaVinci Resolve. We're going to use the curves for hue control and saturation. And then we're going to use the vector scope to monitor where the tones are and where we're moving them to. I'm going to use a few shots so you can see it work on different clips. So let's head straight into DaVinci Resolve and get started. All right, so we are inside the Vinci Resolve and the first thing I know everyone asks for is my color management. So in the project settings, my master settings are Ultra HD. That's what I shoot in both with my drone and with my Canon camera. I always shoot in 30 frames because that works better for Instagram and I use a lot of my content on there as well. Color management, I've set my color science to DaVinci YRGB and the timeline color space is set to DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate and my output color space is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. I know a lot of people use Rec. 709 a and that works sometimes better for Mac and Apple in general for all the devices and for online and social media. I use this because I've set my MacBook screen up to be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 as well and this is the industry standard so I'm just following that. But you can play around with both and see what works better for you. So with that out of the way, you can see that I've already set up a note tree and these are the three clips that we're working with. This is the first drone shot, this is the second drone shot, and this is a shot from my Canon camera. So if we go back, I'm just going to show you quickly and walk you through the note tree here. So if I turn everything off, the first step is to go from lock to DaVinci White Gamut. If we turn that on, that looks like this. We go from DJI D Gamut and Canon Lock to DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. That's to work in that DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate workspace or color subspace in here. And then if we work our way to the last note here, it goes from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709 and that looks something like this. DaVinci White Gamut, Intermediate, into Rec. 709 and Gamut 2.4. That means that everything we do in here in between is in DaVinci White Gamut, which is a larger color space and gives us more flexibility. Then I've added some contrast, I've adjusted the exposure, and I've adjusted the balance ever so slightly. Now these four nodes are not used for anything yet, they're empty, so these are what we're going to be working with, or at least the primaries and the curves are what we're going to be working with, and I might show you how to use the inside and the outside node as well, just to add a little bit more contrast at the end. We have the exact same node tree on the other ones, and I've gone through and corrected each clip accordingly. So this was what it looked like before in lock, this is the standpoint that we have now, and the same thing with the Canon clip here in the end. The only difference here is that the log to DaVinci White Gamut conversion obviously is a little bit different since it's from Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3 from my R6. So if we go back to the first clip here, let's start with that one. As I said in the beginning, we have three tools that we're going to be working with, the primaries and the curves, and then we're going to be using the vector scope to monitor what we're going to do. So the first step for me is to add some teal into the shadows. That just helps to get a more cinematic effect. And what we're going to do here is in the lift, we're going to add 0 0.02 blue, 0 0.01 green, and remove 0 0.01 red. So if we pull up the scope here, you can see if we turn it off, this is where we started. This is the blob that's representing what we have in here. If you turn on the display qualify focus and have the qualify on here, we can move around and see where things are lying. So this blob here is lying around here, closer to the yellow than the green. And when we add this, it's moving way further down towards the cyan and the blue down here because we've added some teal in there. Now this doesn't look good yet. So what we're gonna do in the gamma, I'm gonna remove half of what I've added in the lift. The lift is kind of like the blacks and the shadows and the gamma is more towards the mid-tones and some of the shadows as well. So if we're removing one blue, half a green, and adding half a red here, we're going somewhere back towards the reds and the yellows and greens here, but not fully. So we still have that blue teal-ish tone added a little bit more towards all of the lower tones here. So that's what we're gonna do for the primaries in this case. Remember, we're only focusing on the greens here. We're not focusing on the rest of the image right now. So if we move into the curves, if we go to hue versus hue, where we can move the different hues around and push them towards each other, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock two points. So I don't want to affect the reds 
and everything on the left of this, which continues over here. So I'm gonna make a point around the red and the yellow here. And then I'm gonna make one somewhere between the green and the cyan here, because I don't wanna affect any of the colors lying outside of this. I only wanna focus on the greens when I'm adjusting to get those jungle greens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a point around the greens here, and I'm gonna push it up. And what you can see in the vector scope up here is that that will push all the colors in the greens towards the yellows here. You can see it gives us this nice, gradual progression towards the yellows. What you can see in the image here is that it went from this, those kind of artificial looking greens, into this that looks more yellow and overall way better already. So if we were to remove the blues that we added, you can see this is before and this is after. We just have that kind of teal cinematic glow or look overall added to our image. This is preferential, you can also just do the curves, but this is how I like to do it to achieve those more cinematic kind of jungle greens that a lot of people are asking me how I do. The last step is to go into the hue versus saturation, and I'm gonna make these two same points here, and I'm just gonna drag the saturation down a little bit. What you can see in the vector scope is that it goes a little bit more towards the middle, which is zero saturation, and the further out it is, the more saturated it is. To sell this effect the most possible, it's just gonna decrease the saturation a little bit. And now it looks something like this. That gives you that faded, cinematic, yellow, jungle kind of green that is very popular to create, and this is how I do it. Now, to make sure that you don't think this is a coincidence, that it works for this clip, let's head on to the next clip and do the same thing. So in this clip, we're gonna do the exact same. So I'm taking the primaries, I'm adding two blue, one green, and I'm removing one red. Then I'm going to add 0.01 blue, 0.005 green, and remove 0 0.005 in the red. Sorry, I'm gonna add that. There we go. So that already looks, I've completely stained this. We're gonna add, remove the green and the blue, of course, and we're gonna add a little bit of red. Now we are there. So just to recap, add two blue, one green, and remove one red in the lift, and then remove one blue, half a green, and add half a red in the gamma. That's how we get to this point. Again, you can see we have that teal. It actually helps the water a little bit as well, and the pool here to get more teal, and overall, we just get a little bit more of a faded look. If we head into the curves now, we can go into the hue versus hue again, make our two points around here, and then just push the greens up. I like to make sure that they lie just around the yellow point here. And because we have the, this point here, they're kind of gonna get crammed up towards this point. So it looks like this now. We have this way more yellow looking green and we have the gradual progression from the deeper greens and up towards that point. And then the last step is to head into the saturation and then just desaturate these a little bit, something like this. And now I think we have something that looks pretty good. So for the last one, let's just quickly do that one too. The only difference that I'm gonna do here is that in the gamma, I'm gonna remove what I've added in the lift. And that's simply because in this scene, we have more of a sunset going on in the background, and I don't wanna lose that warm glow that we otherwise would. You will see in a second what I mean. So if we add two blue, one green, and remove one red from this one, if we were to just do half first, you can see what I mean. Remove one blue, half a green, and add half a red. You can see we, this is way warmer now than it is when we do this. And we lose a little bit of the skin tone here, and we lose some of that warm glow. But if we were to remove two blue, one green, and add one red, now we're back kind of where we left off. We actually have a little bit more warmth, so we could lower the red a little bit, but we still have that added blue in the deepest shadows here and the deepest, darkest areas of the image. So that was what we were going for. Now, in the curves, again, we're gonna lock this off. We're gonna make sure we're not affecting the skin tones here. They lie somewhere in between the yellow and the red here. So we wanna make a point around the yellows here, as we did before, but making sure that we're not affecting those tones. And then we're simply just gonna move it up again and we can see that it's way less that we're affecting here. It's not that saturated in this clip already, which means that we probably don't have to desaturate it that much. I don't think that'll make a huge difference. But if we look at the before, which is this, and then the after now, it's not a huge difference. It's just a little bit that it's moving up. You can see it mostly in the greens down here. If we add it there, now we can see that it's just a little bit more yellow and faded. And then if we just go into the saturation, we can just turn that down a little notch it's not much in this case, and I think that looks pretty good. 
So that is how you achieve those colors. Now, one last step that we could do just to enhance the image overall, let's use this as an example. We can go into the inside node that I have here, which is just a normal serial node, by the way. And we can add a circular mask, make the softening 50. And then we're just selecting the middle here. And then we could go in and just add a little bit of contrast by dragging down the shadows and increasing the highlights a little bit, just adding a little bit more contrast in the middle. And then you add an outside node by right-clicking, add node, outside node. And what that does is shift H. This is what we have selected on this node. Everything that's not gray is what's selected. And then on the outside node, everything else is selected but what we selected in the first node. It just allows us to take the shadows here on the tone curve and drag that down a little bit and create that kind of a vignette. And that also helps to sell that effect of those faded greens a little bit more. And I just like the look overall a little bit more with that. So that's the only difference that we make here. This has nothing to do specifically with those tones. This is just to add more contrast and get those deeper, darker greens as well. So that's what I had for you today. I hope this helps you get those cinematic green tones in your videos. And with that said, Leave any questions or comments that you have down below. And otherwise, I will just see you in the next video. Take care.